A fair while ago, I made a video about weird things in the Yakuza games that if you were to think of them in real life would be very, very bizarre. For example, going to a shop and buying a million items at once, or how Japan has an active defense system which obliterates birds from reality as soon as they enter Japan's airspace. Fun fact that is genuinely a real thing, look it up. I thought I would start this video with another bizarre shopping decision by the playable characters of the games. So we all know that the Popo store clerks would have their brains boggled by the amount of things that characters can buy, but I think that what would be more boggling is instead what they're buying. We know the characters don't have any bags or anything, which means again they'll be chucking all of this into their pockets. There are some scenes where characters put stuff in a plastic bag, like in Yakuza 2 slash Kiwami 2, Yakuza 5, or at the end of Lost Judgment, but we never do see these plastic bags when we, as in like the players, buy stuff. But imagine going to a popo and buying spaghetti. Now imagine buying 10 spaghettis. Now think about where those spaghettis goes. Yep, his pockets. All of Yagami's overpowered sushi sets, all of Kiryu's pocket spaghettis, and the like 10 umbrellas that Shinada buys all get thrown into their pockets. You know that one King Bark vine from back in the day? That would be Kiryu whenever he gets knocked over, but his pockets are seemingly an endless void that can fit millions of yens, a phone, hundreds of drinks, and a feast worthy of a king, so it would be a lot more than spaghetti falling out. But I bet the staff at these establishments hate no one more than the Yagami Detective Agency. You see, when Kiryu smashes up an establishment, the staff go, Get out! Leave! and take your spaghetti with you! But then when Yagami or Kaito do it, it's like, look what you've done to our business. It's fine, pal. You see this right here? That's right. I unlocked the skill. And the Popo store clerks have to abide by the Skills and Abilities Act of 2005, so they legally cannot refuse their business. But then when it comes to destroying private property, who who's the wizard that casted a spell on all of the buildings and stuff that you can't destroy? The fake brands that the developers made up, like Smile Burger and Popo, can be destroyed, but these brands from the real world must be so powerful that no one can destroy them. It even dissuades bad guys from coming to attack you. But then there's other buildings, some of which you can see people inside, but you can't interact with them in any way. Like, imagine that happening to you in real life. Ooh, that's a really nice looking rest. Why can't I open the door? Or imagine if there was some dude off his face on meth and he grabs a big metal pipe and goes to smash a window of a beef ball place and nothing happens. It's very weird if you ask me. And now in stuff like Yakuza 6 and Kiwami 2, there's no cuts between when a fight starts and ends. It's all very seamless. And most people on the street will watch some people beat the absolute shit out of each other. Then suddenly they see a massive six foot man sprinting straight towards them and as would anyone, they very understandably shit their pants. But weirdly, when you look at some of the older games, like Yakuza 0 or Yakuza 3, you start a fight with someone, and everyone's all, Woo! Yeah, kill him! And no one seems to even flinch when you get near them. But then as soon as the fight's over, they're like, Oh, yeah, that's right, I'm supposed to be heading to work, aren't I? Oh, shit, I'm not going to be late or anything. That'd be a bloody pain in the ass, wouldn't it? Oh, oh yeah, I'm going to get uh, milk on the way back, too. Yeah, can't forget that. Here's another question I have. What's with these goons, these rapscallious bastards? And seeing you walk down the street and they're apparently super chill, but the second you think, oh nice, you uploaded a new video, I'm gonna run home and watch it, and so you pick up the pace a bit. No one is allowed to jog near us! Kill him! Another thing with these fights is that when a fight starts, a little title card slams down. Is getting your name as a title card some sort of subscription service? Do you have to like be registered with the Japanese government to get one or something? Or is it like old Twitter verification where you have to be someone special and you're given your own little title card? What do you have to do to someone to just be given a title card like ruffian, hooligan, goon, all that sort of shit? But what did little wimpy boy Kosuke from Lost Judgment do to get his own title card? And why is it just his first name? Or maybe it's just based on what like the playable character thinks the other person's name is? You know, like. What if there's a misunderstanding? Let's say someone comes up and introduces themselves to Ichiban, and Ichiban's all, Hey, what's your name? Or, my name's Tim? Show me what you got! What about your title as well? Do you have to write down that you want that showing up too? I mean, it doesn't say CEO of Sky Finance Shun Akiyama in that one fine six, so I guess Akiyama opted out? Even in cutscenes, who do you have to pay to freeze time so that when someone meets you for the first time, it just tells them your life story, you know? But if you're at the Department of Titles getting your dynamic intro license, do you also get to choose the style in which your title card appears? Or do you choose the style of the title cards that you see? Do you have to pay extra to get your own theme music too? Like, there's so many questions. Obviously, this is just how it works in Japan when you meet and fight people, but I have to wonder if I got into a fight with someone in Japan, what would show up? Would it be my full name or my first name or do I get my title in there as well or would I just be Australian man and it just plays my national anthem? So many questions, so little time. But if you want to find out more about dynamic intros and whatnot and gain a very deep understanding in how they operate, you can go to Japan and punch someone in the head, then you can let me know how it went in the comments.